Welcome to the Alpha Male 2.0 podcast. I am Caleb Jones. This is Alpha Male 2.0, freedom-focused lifestyle design for men living a the freest lifestyle that a modern man, modern typical man can experience without having to be a multimillionaire or a gazillionaire or a billionaire dating multiple attractive women without cheating. Location independent income, it's a very good life. Today, I'm gonna talk about a question that I've gotten a lot. I'm about to read a comment I got on my YouTube channel on guilt, regarding guilt, the societal programming and dealing with that around the guilt of being non-monogamous. I'm gonna read a comment. I did not write down the name of the person who wrote this comment. I am very sorry if this is you. But this was a comment in one of my recent YouTube videos. And it's actually several comments, but this is a, the reason I'm reading this comment is I've been asked this question before. It's rare that I just do a podcast based on a singular comment. It's usually a comment that I have seen asked in other contexts, okay? So this is the comment. It goes like this, and if you're watching the video version, I'm just reading this on my phone here. Hey Caleb, it might be helpful if you made a video or a podcast about like, should you feel bad about being non-monogamous? I mean, just responding to the common belief that long-term monogamy is morally better behavior. Because especially when you're trying to build MLTR relationships, a lot of women, in my experience, will really want you to be monogamous with them at some point. And they may say or imply that you're being selfish, inconsiderate, immoral, or something like that. Now, I will respond to that in a minute. Or could even draw that conclusion yourself just by seeing the way that some women seem to be hurt by jealousy feelings in MLTR with you. So it might be helpful to hear you kind of defend non-monogamy from a moral, ethical standpoint. Now, someone else responded to this person, and this is what the someone else said. Someone else said, it's immoral to own another person's body or tell them what to do when you're not physically in the same room with them. Being in love doesn't stop other people from being hot, and there's definitely something wrong with suppressing your biological needs just because you're in a loving relationship. One has nothing to do with the other, and no one should repress their authentic self or act like they physically own someone else. So that is a philosophy I agree with. I have mentioned this philosophy before. However, the person who wrote the original comment responded to this person. That's what, This is what he said. I mean, monogamy is a consensual agreement, not forceful ownership over another person. That's accurate. And I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with suppressing, not acting upon, some sexual desires you have if a more important value to you is loving your partner and giving them the best experience by being faithfully monogamous to them. So your arguments aren't really convincing. I'm not actually trying to argue that monogamy is morally better. I'm just saying your arguments here don't make a compelling case for why it's not. Okay, so let me deconstruct all of this. First of all, the only reason that people, and I've said this a thousand times, but the only reason that people desire monogamy, the only reason, and this is the only reason, the only reason is because of false societal programming, meaning they were raised in a culture that said to them since the day they were born, if you really love someone or if you really care someone or if you're a mature adult, you will only have sex with that one person and you will never have sex with anyone else. There is no logistical reasons why that is true anymore. Now, historically, there were reasons. So back in the 1800s, your children were assets. Your children were things you needed in order to retire. I've talked about this before. So if your wife, back in 1807, fucked your neighbor and he impregnated your wife with his kid and the kid came out and it was obviously his kid for whatever reason, maybe a different skin tone or something, then that would be a serious problem for you back then. As I've talked about 10,000 times over the past 15 years, you can determine the parentage of a child before the child is even born. They take a needle and just poke it into the, the woman's stomach and withdraw some of the fluid, and you'll know with a 99.9% .9 accuracy if that kid is yours or not, okay? Paternity tests you can get at Walgreens for $20 once the kid is born. So technology has solved that problem. Also, yes, it was dangerous for women to be promiscuous, historically speaking, because they could get pregnant and the pregnancy could kill them. Yes, is that true today? No, they invented something in the 1960s called birth control, maybe you've heard of it. They invented something 100 years ago called condoms, maybe you've heard of them. 
So in a world full of condoms for STD protection, birth control from accidentally having children, and very cheap, effective, and easy to do paternity tests for figuring out parentage, none of these things that pro-monogamy people talk about factor in anymore. So the only reason left is what? Societal programming. Your feelings and the way you were conditioned falsely by your culture. There is no other logistical reason to defend monogamy. And even if you say, well, Caleb, what if your partner has sex with other people and they don't take those precautions? Then you shouldn't have this person as a serious partner. This is why I talk about OLTRs. You need to be MLTRs for six months and then OLTRs for a long, they have to qualify. You have to watch the woman in her life behave a certain way. And you don't get serious till you see that she's clearly not promiscuous. She either doesn't ever hook up with other men, or if she does, she takes a lot of precautions to do so, or she doesn't do it. You pay attention to these things, then you get serious. If you're in a serious relationship, monogamous or not, with someone you can't trust, you're a fucking moron. That's nothing to do with monogamy or not monogamy, you're just stupid. I'm married, I trust her implicitly and completely, and if I didn't, I would not be married to her because then I would be an idiot. So anyone who says, well yeah, they could use birth control or a condom or, or parental testing, but what if they don't? Well then why are you with that person, you fucking moron? That's on you, that's nothing to do with monogamy or not. So again, we come back to the only reason women say, well, if you're not monogamous to you, then you're an asshole, or you're immature, or you're immoral. It is 100% cultural conditioning and nothing else in the 21st century, okay? You have to remember this. They're coming at it completely irrationally. The only reason they think this is because of what they were told. The, you guys who have religion, the only reason you have the religion you had is because you happen to be born into a region that told you that religion. If you were born in Saudi Arabia, you're gonna grow up Islamic, period, right? If you grow up in China, you're gonna grow up, you know, really nothing, maybe Buddhist, I don't know what you grew up with. Uh, if you were born in the South, in the United States, you're gonna, with to Christian parents, you're gonna be a Christian. Okay, it's the same thing with religion. The only reason you are the religion today, with rare exception, is that's the family, household, or culture you're born into. If you're Indian, you're gonna be Hindu, right? Not because you did a rational analysis of what was the most accurate religion. No, it's all cultural, societal programming, which as I've talked about, is the strongest societal programming there is, okay? So that's item number one. These women who demean you for wanting to be non-monogamous are doing it strictly for irrational reasons. There are no rational reasons to defend monogamy anymore in the modern era. 300 years ago, yes. Today, no. Now, I want to address what he said when he said, let's see, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with suppressing, not acting on some sexual desires to have if a more important value to you is loving your partner and giving them the best experience by being faithfully monogamous to them. All right, I'm gonna tell you a whole number of reasons why that sentence is incorrect, okay? First of all, the only reason your partner, which means the woman you're dating, wants monogamy is for completely irrational reasons. I just demonstrated this. She is not demonstrating these desires for anything logistical, logical, scientific, or rational. It's all emotional. All of it. All of it. All of it. Especially if it's FBs and MLTRs, which aren't 100% serious, okay? Especially we're talking about that. You mentioned OLTRs, okay? Now, you said, I don't, or you said, not you, and I'm, talk, I'm not talking to just the person who wrote this comment. I'm talking to a lot of you because a lot of you have asked this question. So when I say you, I'm talking about the royal you. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with suppressing not acting upon some sexual desires you have. Let's stop right there. There is something inherently wrong. You can't do it forever. I've talked about this. Men in long-term monogamous relationships, okay, well past two or three years when the NRE has died, the honeymoon phase is well over. She's not giving them blowjobs anymore. All right, what they're doing is, I've talked about this many times, and I've seen, it's a metaphor, it's not literal, but it's a metaphor. I've seen many men go through this metaphorically. They're walking around like this. They're walking with their, their hands, their fists balled into fists, and their teeth clenched, and I'm a good husband, and I'm a good Christian, and I'm, I love my wife. I'm not gonna fuck anyone, see? <laughs> and they're not happy. I've said this 10,000 times, and I am right. If you want to have sex with just one woman for about a year or two, go ahead and do that. I think it's stupid. That's called serial monogamy. It won't make you happy long term. But you could defend that. There are ways you could defend short term serial monogamy where you fuck just one woman for about 18 months and then you break up and go fuck another girl. 
You could defend that. Beyond that, it will not make you happy. You will want to have sex with someone else, and well, if you just repress it, I don't see anything inherently wrong. There is something inherently wrong. It'll make you less happy. And the entire point of happiness, in my view, in my philosophy, is the entire point of life is to be happy. It's the whole reason you're here, is to be long-term happy. Also for her as well. Yes, just to be happy. Long-term happiness is not possible if you're long-term monogamous to anyone. So you are now sacrificing your long-term happiness for that woman and the, who wants this thing from you and the only reason she wants it is for irrational reasons. How does that sound? Does that make any sense to you at all? None. Does it make any sense? It's stupid. It's childish. It's silly. Okay? Moreover, I'm, I'm gonna give you some more reality now. The odds are overwhelming that while you're sitting around gripping your fists and clenching your teeth, post a year, year and a half, two years, when the honeymoon phase is over, you wanna fuck other women, but you can't, so you're repressing your desire to give your woman a great experience, the thing she wants for no rational reason. While you're doing that, guess what's gonna happen? She's gonna dump you. The odds are overwhelming she will break up with you, okay? Three-fourths of all girlfriend-boyfriend relationships are terminated by the woman. 70 to 80% of all divorces are filed by the female. Women are biologically wired to leave men, particularly if they are monogamous. This goes back to caveman wiring. We've talked about a lot about this. So if we lived in a world where if you were 100% monogamous, it virtually guaranteed that woman would stay with you for 57 years, very different conversation. You'd actually have a pretty good point to make. You'd have a point. I don't know if I'd still agree, but you'd have a valid point. You have no fucking point. You're gonna sit there and sacrifice and sacrifice and suffer, and she's gonna dump you and go fuck someone else. And you'd be like, oh. Well, why did I sacrifice? I went through this myself. <laughs> I was monogamous for nine years, only to get a divorce. So what was the fucking point? I could have banged all kinds, of, not all kinds of chicks, but I could have had a decent amount of fun, you know, having sex with other women during those nine years that I didn't take because I wanted to be a good husband. I went through this myself. So have most men. So now you have another reason for not doing this. The odds are over fucking whelming this woman is gonna dump you for even if you make that sacrifice. Now, if women said, look, you be monogamous to me. Don't fuck any woman except me. And I will sign this legally binding document stating that I will not break up with you, ever, unless you fuck somebody. Different story. And women actually did that, they fall through. We live in that kind of society. Different story. Is that the society you live in? This MLTR is saying, you need to be monogamous to me because of irrational reasons that make no sense. You think she's not gonna break up with you ever because you go monogamous, because she stamps a little foot? No, the odds are overwhelming she will, it's just a matter of time. Less than three years, most likely, okay? So now you're doing this for no reason. You're suffering, which you shouldn't suffer anyway, and now you're doing it for no reason. Now, I'm gonna continue on with the comment. If a more important value to you is loving your partner and giving them the best experience by being faithfully monogamous to them. I just explained why that makes no sense. You're gonna sacrifice, reduce your happiness, and she's not gonna make the equivalent commitment. Well, here's what I mean by that. Well, yes, Caleb, I'll promise to not fuck other women and she'll promise to not fuck other men. Is that an equivalent commitment? No. There is a famous bit from the show Two and a Half Men. I quoted it on one of my old, old Black Dragon podcasts where Charlie Sheen is playing Charlie Sheen and he's dating this chick and this chick is telling him to stop fucking other women. And he basically says, do you want to fuck other men? And she goes, of course I don't. He goes, then there you go. You're not making an equivalent sacrifice. I really like fucking other women because I'm a man. You're a girl, that's not a desire you have, which by the way is true. My wife, Pink Firefly, is smoking hot. She could fuck another, she could snap her fingers and go fuck 10 guys. She doesn't, she doesn't want to. You know why? Because she's a girl. Girls don't aren't into that stuff the way men are. Men and women are different. So he says, okay, you know what you need to do? I'll promise not fuck other women and you promise to stop dancing. She goes, are you kidding? Dancing's my life. He goes, there you go. Now we're dealing with a level playing field. This is funny, but it's true. This woman stamping her foot is not making the sacrifice that you're making by not having sex with other women, by her not having sex with other guys. She doesn't want to, unless she's a very unusual, very promiscuous, very young woman. She doesn't want to fuck a bunch of other guys. She doesn't want to. She wants to fuck you and that's it. That's what she really wants. It's not what you want. You want to fuck her and two or three other hot girls, right? Let's be honest. So she's not making the equivalent commitment. Moreover, an equivalent commitment would be you stop fucking other girls and I promise to not break up with you. 
ever or within five years or 10 years, as I mentioned earlier. Is she going to make that commitment? No. If you even ask her to make that commitment, she's going to be insulted. But that would be an equivalent commitment. See this works? So yes, you love her. I love my wife. It's about making equal commitments. It's not about whether or not you love someone. That's more societal programming. That statement is a lot of societal programming. Well, you have to be faithful, faithfully committed, and faithfully monogamous. That's all dripping with societal programming. Lastly, let's talk about morality and ethics. Um, I don't believe in morals. I do believe in ethics. I've talked about this. I think I did a whole podcast on this one point. You can go look at my podcast. Uh, morals are what society externally tells you what is right. So I was raised Catholic. I was told it was immoral to eat shellfish because the Bible said so. Well, that's fucking stupid. Ethics are what come from inside you. So one of my, I talk about in the Unchained Man, alphamalebook.com, I talk about developing a personal code, a personal code of what? Ethics. One of my ethics, one of my big ones is I can't lie. I cannot tell you something I know is not true. I can't do that. I can be sarcastic. I can make jokes. I can refuse to answer questions. That's all allowed. But I cannot verbally state to you something I know is not true. I can't do it. I won't do it. And I've lost money by not doing this. I've lost women by not doing this. I've gotten in trouble because I wouldn't lie about certain things. That's, that's my, part of my ethic. So ethics and morals, you need to make your own decision as to whether or not monogamy is ethical. And I just told you that there is no logistical, scientific, rational reason why monogamy in the modern era with condoms, birth control, and prenuptial tests is ethical or moral. There's no reason for it anymore. None. And I'm going to repeat again, well, what if the other person doesn't do that? Then you are the idiot for getting into a serious relationship with someone you didn't trust or someone who is not trustworthy. That's 100% on you. Okay? I don't have that problem. I've been with Pink Firefly now for, what, seven, eight years? Never had that kind of problem because I trust her and she's trustworthy. Why is that? Because I waited years, literally years, before I got serious with her. Years. A year as an FB, a year where we just kind of knew each other, did nothing much happened. Uh, six, seven months as an MLTR. Uh, let's see, two years as a girlfriend OLTR before she moved in with me and we got really serious as a married couple. Okay? That's why I wanted to make sure she was trustworthy. I didn't make those errors. So that's all on you. So that's it. That's why you should feel zero guilt for being non monogamous in any context whatsoever both with casual people, wear condoms, and with serious people, she has to go through a process where you've proved she's trustworthy and you trust her, or else you don't do it, and she doesn't make demands upon you that are 100% irrational, completely and only based on what her culture, her mommy, her daddy, her religion, and the movies and TV shows she watched have told her, when there's no logical, rational reasons for it. Cool, make sense? Any questions about this, let me know. If you want me to expand on this, if you guys want me to expand on this topic on future podcasts, I am certainly willing to do that. Have fun. See you later. Bye.